Good morning. Today we're going to talk about cylinder leakage testing. So we're going to use a cylinder leakage test to identify two things. First of all, how much uh, a cylinder is leaking in percentage, and we can compare all the cylinders on the engine, which we're going to do here. The other thing we can do is we can use it to identify where that leakage is going. So this will tell me exactly, is it going past an intake valve? Is it going past an exhaust valve? Is it going past the compression, the compression and oil rings? Or is it going through the head gaskets to head into the cooling system? So this is going to allow me, A, am I leaking? And B, if I'm leaking, where is it going? The tools I'm going to need for this primarily, I'm going to need a compression, uh, I'm sorry, a leak down tester. So here is a leak down tester. And this is a, happens to be a snap-on leak down tester. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the percentage of leakage that I have in a cylinder. We're going to put in a precise amount of air, and I'm going to measure the amount of air that comes out. And in order to do that, I'm going to need to hook this to the shop air. And then I'm going to need to hook it to an adapter that's going to go into my cylinder. Very similar to a compression gauge adapter, the difference is there's no Schrader valve in the bottom of it. It's just a hose. So I'm going to need this tool, some compressed air. I'm also going to want to use, I need to be able to put this at top dead center. So when I put it to top dead center, I, I need to get the piston to top dead center on the compression stroke. So I could use a screwdriver, which could kind of get me close. It's going to move me up and down. Or I can use a much more precise tool that I can actually thread into the threads and has marks or graduations on it. So I can see exactly where top dead center is. It's a little easier for number one cylinder because I could use the timing mark on the crankshaft pulley, which would get me on top dead center for number one and number four, which means the hard ones is two and three. So I probably won't use the tool for cylinder one and four where I'd want to use the cylinder for two and three where I don't have a mark on the crankshaft pulley. Obviously, if I'm working on an engine that the crankshaft pulley is hard to get to, then I might want to use it on all the cylinders. I also need a tool for turning the engine over. In this case, I'm going to use a 22 millimeter socket with a small extension that goes over the bolt on the crankshaft pulley and a ratchet. And I'm using a nice long ratchet. That way I have plenty of torque. And this ratchet also has very fine teeth. So I could, even though it's really long, I could still move something in a very small area. If I was doing this on a car uh, with the engine in it, you can see it's long enough to go all the way down to the crankshaft and still work up top. So that is a real advantage instead of having to put my hands down in here or bend over. So this way I could use my hand up here and we'll see where I can also see what's going on up here. I'm not having to be under a vehicle and where it might become a two-person operation or take me a lot of shots to get it correct. I'm also going to need a 10 millimeter socket. In this case, I've connected it to my cordless tool for taking everything out of the way and removing the coils. And I'm going to need my spark plug socket with an extension and a ratchet to get the spark plugs out. So let me go ahead and take a spark plug out. I'm only going to take one out. I need to leave the other ones in here because I want that pressure in the other cylinders to help keep this engine from spinning over. So I'm going to disconnect my electrical connector, take my coil, take out my spark plug, and now I want to find top dead center. So I'm going to need to use a flashlight so I can see down there. As I walk the engine around, I'm going to need to put my extension on the front of the crankshaft. And I want to turn this engine clockwise because of the direction that it's designed to go. So I can walk this around until I get to the timing mark. And a little bit more. So I'm at top dead center. And I know I'm at top dead center on number one cylinder. The question is, am I at top dead center on number one cylinder, or am I at top compression or exhaust? And the reality is, it doesn't matter. Because if I'm on the exhaust stroke, I'm going to have 100% leakage, or very close to it. So all the air I put in is going to come out through the exhaust. If I got it right, 
then I'm going to have a much smaller percentage of leakage. Another way I could do it or find out is I could take my hose and I could put my hose in here and as I'm walking the engine around I could feel if I get pressure here or I could put a balloon on here. Uh, that all takes a lot more work. I really don't care. I've got a 50-50 shot. I'm fairly lazy. So I'm going to go with my 50-50 shot because if I'm wrong, all i got to do is disconnect the air, turn the engine one revolution, and I'll be all set up. Or I could give up and go to cylinder four and then start from there. Now I'm going to go through this in the firing order, and the firing order for this car is one, three, four, two. So we're going to walk through it in the firing order. Now I'm going to hook my tool up to compressed air. So when I do this, get it so you can see it, we're going to watch this gauge jump up a little bit. And we see the gauge right now is about five. So I'm going to pull back the little red piece on the regulator and I'm going to move the regulator so it's down below the zero mark. Now I turn it up to come to zero. We never turn it down to zero, we turn it down past zero and bring it back up to the pressure we want. So what's happening right now is I've compressed air going into the machine and no air is coming out. Zero percent leakage. So when I hook this up to my cylinder, I'm going to see the needle come up a whole bunch and then come back down. And it comes up a whole bunch because all of a sudden I'm letting a whole bunch of air into the cylinder. As I fill the cylinder, now the amount of air going through the machine becomes less and it should settle back down. That's if I'm on the compression stroke. If I'm on the exhaust stroke, we're going to see it go up and stay up. If I'm not exactly at top dead center, I can actually cause the engine to rotate where I might start with a very low amount of leakage and then watch it go higher. So let's see what happens. And right here I have 10% leakage. Oh, a little better than that. Looks more like 8% leakage. So this would be a good result. Anything under 20% is considered acceptable, but if I'm in between 10 and 20%, I really want to know where it's going. Because if it's coming past a valve on a modern engine, it can actually cause a misfire because that'll actually cause the flame to blow out or not burn properly. If it's 15% past the rings, it's not a problem. But if it's past a valve, it is a problem. Under 10%, I don't care. I'm moving on to the next cylinder. So all I do now is record my findings at 8%. I, if you notice, I'm no longer calibrated to zero. So I need to recalibrate this every cylinder. So I would, again, take this, take it down below, slowly bring it up to zero, and I'm ready for my next cylinder as soon as I get it set up. So now I need to put this spark plug back in. Now the next cylinder I'm going to want to do is cylinder number three because we know our firing order is one, three, four, two. So number three has some stuff in the way. So I need to pull this wiring harness off. Now I can lift that out of the way. I can pull back the release and disconnect the electrical connector and then I can take my coil off spark plug out And I can do this a couple of different ways. I can put the screwdriver down here and you can see my pistons very low because if this is at top dead center, this, well it has to be at bottom dead center, it's at the start of my compression stroke. So as I move up, I'll see the screwdriver come up and I want to put my hand on it and I'm going to have to kind of figure out back and forth about where the maximum height is. Or I can use the tool I showed you right here and what this does is it threads in and it doesn't have to be tight it just has to be snug because I'm just looking for how far it comes up 
Now I'm going to hook up this and let's watch this and we'll watch it come up. See how it just came up? My piston's coming to the top dead center. I can watch and it just started to go down. So I can come back. It goes up. It just starts to come down. So I come back the other way and I'm right it up. I'm now at top dead center. So you can see how nice it is having something that's graduated like this where I can see that as opposed to a, a hand. And on a leak down test, if I'm not right at top dead center, I really run the risk of spitting the engine over and having to fight it. So the whole kit for it comes with a couple of these, everything in the kit was only about 50 bucks. So if you're gonna do a lot of this, I think it's a good investment. On the other hand, if you don't have it, don't let it discourage you. That's what screwdrivers are for. So the idea is what's the right way to do it and how can I get there if I don't have all the right tools. So now I'm gonna put this in. And my calibration has crept up a little bit, so I'm going to kick that back down, get us to zero, hook this up, and I'm right about, eh, looks about 10, 12%, right in there. So this tells me two things. First of all, it tells me I turned the engine in the correct direction because if I went the other way, I'd be at the exhaust stroke, which would mean I'd be turning the engine the wrong way. So that's what would happen if I wasn't turning the engine in the correct rotation. And this is also why we do this test in the firing order. If I went one, two, three, four, then I'd have to spin the engine several times and, and I might lose track of when I'm on the compression stroke. From, from here, I'm on cylinder three, the next cylinder in line, number four. So let's go there next. And now let's walk it around. And again, I can look at my front mark at top dead center and see I'm there, but I can also use the tool right here. And right there. This tool is also great if I think that my harmonic balancer has slipped, if the marks aren't visible, if the marks, a lot of new cars no longer have timing marks. So this is a, a great quick way uh, of doing this. And you can see with the long extension, I can see both things. So now that I'm at top to center on my compression stroke, take this tool back out, put my leak down tester back in. I want to make sure I'm snug here to the O-ring. I don't have to overly crank it. So now I'm going to zero this. And I'm right around 12%. So very consistent on this engine. And we got one cylinder left to do. For the last cylinder, when I line it up, I'm going to do it with a screwdriver. And we'll use the screwdriver, and then we'll put the actual tool back in and see how close we get. Okay, so for this cylinder, I'm going to use the screwdriver to find top dead center, show you guys that. And we'll double check it using this before I do the leak down test. So, again, I got to rotate the crankshaft. I can also kind of guess, I know where the mark is here. I could draw a straight line. I could actually put a mark on the underside. If I could see it, it's easy here on the stand. It might not be easy in the car. So I can kind of get an idea of where I'm going because I'm only going, instead of going 360 degrees, I'm only going 180 degrees. I can kind of put my hand on this. I feel it going up, up, and that's probably pretty close. 
and yep, now I'm going down. So, and that's probably close enough for us to work because I'm on the compression stroke, so both valves should be close. So let's see how we do. So again, I got to put my adapter in. I have to zero it down. Go on with zero and hook it up. And again, I'm at 12%. So, very, very consistent on this engine. So, if this engine's running a little bit rough, which it does, it is not a compression problem, most likely. I'm not leaking. So, if I'm not leaking, I probably have pretty close to the same compression. Uh, that being said, this is a lot more work than a compression test. We normally do a compression test first. But again, even if my compression was off a little bit, I really don't have big leakage coming out of a cylinder. This cylinder should, this engine should run nice and smooth. So just out of curiosity, let's see how close I got with that screwdriver. So I'm going to install this. And I can see where I'm at. And I'm going to go one way. Still going up. Now it stopped going up. Now it's going down. So I was probably off a good 10 degrees using the screwdriver compared to using this tool. You saw for this test, it didn't affect the results. So it becomes a distinction without a difference. But certainly, if I was trying to time a car or trying to put things together or verify a harmonic balance or hasn't slipped or try to find timing marks, you can see where this is much more accurate than using a screwdriver. So I hope that doing the leak down testing answered your questions on that today. We have an engine that's nice and even, and thank you for watching.